whatever it is I'm about to teach in today's video, I also learned it from another channel. But the good side about learning from other channels is practicing. So please practice what you learn whenever it is you see them. Feathered lighting and soft lighting are two different techniques used in the studio. They are not the same. Soft lighting is related to how big or small your modifier is relative to your subject size. Feathered lighting is how even your light source is on your subject. Evenness and softness are not the same. You can see how soft the light is with respect to how the shadows are created on your subject. Is there an easy transition or is there a hard contrasty shadow created on your subject? Evenness on your subject will then be seen when it comes to how harsh or the hot spots created on your subject. If you don't see too much hot spots, then that's how even your light source will be. So in today's video, I'll show you practical examples of what to do, how to do it, and where to position your light source when it comes to feathering of light in the studio. Whenever I talk about feathering of light, I always say this. Imagine you don't have enough cash, you have one light in your studio, and you want to shoot two or more people in your studio. All you need to do is feather the light source. There will be an even spread of light on your subjects. I mean, you, you enjoy today's video, and I hope you learn a thing or two. Practice it which is very much important to me. In my previous video, I did mention about direction of lighting, and I wanted to see if I can relate direction of lighting to feathered lighting. I don't think they will work because the direction of light will then come with side lights, front lights, back lighting, and rim lighting. Feathered lighting, you can use it for back lighting, you can use it for rim lighting, you can use it for front lighting, you can use it for side lighting. So I don't think there's any relation to that. So uh, feathered lights, it's far more important in the studio whenever it is you're shooting. So let's see how we can use it in today's video. Subscribe, like, share, and make sure, you know, comments down in the comment section below if you have any problems at all. I'll see you when I start shooting. Peace. We have Temi in the studio today. You guys have seen on my channel before. We did some cloudy shoots. I'm sure I'm going to point it out very soon. Maybe here or there. They'll go watch that one. So it was fun. She's back. Nigerian babe, beautiful. Say hi. Yeah, hi. Right. Explaining soft lighting and feathered lighting. I have my modifier. Soft lighting comes with the size of the modifier and how close the modifier is closer to your subject. Currently, I can't even open a wig span, right? I think, yeah, this is how far away the light source is from my subject. That's one. Two. It's a big modifier. It's a 120 centimeter soft box from photo box. I'm going to link the description below a link to buy in this one if you want it it's a silver inner line and double diffused i like it it works for today's video whatever it is i want to do All right so softness i've achieved it that's how softness is achieved in the studio on your subject feathered lighting now comes in when i move my light source usually what we see is people turning the light source this way onto their subject yes we know we understand no problem Feathered lighting has to come from the edge of the modifier. So anyone who works with me, if I'm shooting with them, I tell them, make sure the subject is right at the edge of the modifier you're using. So this is the edge of the modifier. What we'll be getting from this is the spill of the light from the edge of the modifier and not from the middle of the modifier. From the middle, we have hot spots created on our subjects. From the edge of the modifier, you can see, yes, we have a lot of light loss but we can, we can get the spill, giving us a little less intensity on our subject. And at the end of the day, the spread on the other side, I'm sure you, we are still going to get to that one light effect where the shadow created on the other side of the subject. But the intensity here, the light over here, won't be so much as you're going to see on the left side. So there's going to be just a small difference. That is where the evenness comes in. So I hope I've made myself clear on feathering of light and softness. So what I will do next to fill in the shadow is to bring in a fill card or a fill light, but I'm going to use a bounce card, a homemade bounce card. So let me take a couple of shots and show you how it looks like. I'll be tethering, I'm using a Capture One and a 5D Mark IV and a Sigma A12 1.4 lens. So let me see how to screen record this. All right, so, the gear again, 5D Mark IV. I'm using the Godox AD600 as my main light for now. So we'll start with that. Now 
The first thing I usually do is to make sure my ambient light is not affecting my frame. So that's what I'll do first. So I'll take a test shot and see how that affects the frame. I mean, this is it's too small. It's fine. I like it. Currently, I'm at ISO 125. Let me move it down to 100. Let's see how that looks. So tell me, what I'll do is, the pose you're in, you keep it for all the test shots I'll do, then I mean, we can start shooting. All right. Yeah. So ISO 100, F2.5, shutter speed 1 over 200. I like it where it is. We'll start with the feathered lights, right? 1 over 64 for our power or intensity on the light source. Let's see how that looks like. Beautiful. If you take a look at the frame, you can see how easy and soft the light looks. That's from how big the modifier is. And also, you can also see less hot spots on our subject. So that's where the diffused lighting comes in. Diffused lights are, are lights without a lot of specularity. That's too much highlight on the subject. Now, let me zoom out. Let me increase the intensity of my light source. So, so let's go to 1 over 64 plus 7. Let's see how that looks like. So yeah, so this is me increasing the intensity, right? Now let me turn the light source onto here. This is what we usually see. We'll see the difference very, very, very soon. The test shot again. Right, now let's compare the two. I'm going to show you that on the screen very, very soon. Full screen, yeah. Comparing the two, we then realize how much hot spots we have on the second image as compared to the first image. The first image has an even spread of light. It then makes the lighting look flattering. Fine, you're going to get shadows created on the other side of the subject's face. That's normal. But as compared to the second one where the light was directly on my subject, you can see how harsh the shadow is on the opposite side. The second thing we can also notice is the fact that the background isn't lit, right? The background isn't lit. So you can use that, the knowledge of inverse square law, to make sure if you want to lit your background or darken your background. I, I don't want to lit my background today. I want it to be as dark as possible. In as much as I have some fill in it, I don't want to be too bright, right? Also, I use this kind of technique to make sure if I have, say, ambient light in my frames, so like how I have the lamp over here, if I turn it on and I blast the light on it, it's going to kill it. So either I grade it or I use the feathering technique just to make sure I have even light source on my subject, that's one, and also make sure I cut the light hitting the lamp just so that I can enhance it in post. So that's how best you can use the feathering technique. You know, let me take a couple more shots with this. This time around, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep this, the way I turned it on here, right? But then I'm going to move it a little bit further away. So I've increased the distance. So right now we are determining how the distances work also. But then again, it's still on our subject. All right, so let's start with this part. We'll take a test shot. Keep the same thing for me. When you close your eyes, please don't blink. Yeah, we have that. Let me turn it all the way on you. Oh, wait. Let me turn it a little bit further away from you. All right? So this is like complete 90. And this is 45 all the way on you to see some hot spots. Right, so let's see. So the first image had the feathered light a little bit turned towards here. So you're going to see 
that shadow transition. It's smooth, it's easy. The softness is coming from there. Size of the modifier, I've already told you guys. The second one is a complete feathered light, 90 degrees. So that's less amount of light, but an even spread. The third one is turning the light directly on our subject. And that's how you can see how hot spotty looks like. So the next thing I would want to do is to bring this V flat closer to her, right? And let's turn this light away. Let me bring this one closer towards the light so that it bounces back on her. Okay, so let's see how this one looks. And turn the phases, eh? Yeah. So what we are currently seeing is the light comes from here, bounces off here, then fills in the shadow. So we have our key light, you know, doing whatever it is it has to do over here. I'm sure this thing is blocking the light. Okay. That's on the phone. Key lights giving us the feathered lights over here. You use the fill to bounce that feathered light away. All that light loss that's coming this way, you use this to fill it in. And I mean, we have the most sweet, softest light from the modifier. Softest light from the size and how close the modifier is. And even light source from the feathering. You can also tell how dark the background has become. Easy. The background has become dark because one, we have the inverse square lock playing in there. Also, I've moved my subject far away from the background, so it's normal. If it was closed, probably it would have flipped the background. Also, if I turned the light source on my subject this way, we'll probably let it, but we're getting too much for spots, which is definitely not what we are looking out for. So yeah, that probably brings me to the very end of today's video. It's usually that. I just wanted to clear that misconception about feathered lighting and soft lighting. So I hope you've learned a thing or two. Practice it as you watch it, which is very much important for me. Like it's key for me, right? So, I mean, after doing all that, you now see what I see whenever, I, whenever it is I say, or I talk about feathered lighting and soft lighting. They are different, just know that. Just put it in your mind. They are different, totally different. Don't release them to each other. Right, so yeah, as usual, I'll go about doing whatever it is I do after I'm done teaching you guys. So you probably see the ones that will trend, like we say. So make sure you stay tuned, watch a thing or two of what I do when I'm done teaching you people. And yeah, subscribe as usual. Check down in the description box below. I think I'll link everything I used today in today's video. Today's video is sponsored by TJD Color Profiles. They are live stream packs, so I'm sure I'm going to use them to color today's pictures. So make sure you check them out. Link in the description box below. Support the brand so that we can also support the people who shoot with. And I'll see you in the next video when I'm done shooting. Peace.